Hello and welcome to this demonstration of the Tanberg Model 2 reel to reel tape recorder from 1956. The Model 2 was the successor to the Model 1, which was introduced just a couple of years earlier, and it was the first machine from Tanberg that was really in, uh, intended as a standalone tape recorder. The Model 1 uh, was really intended as an accessory to the radios, uh, but the main re uh, reason for it was to be able to record radio programs and listen to them later, and also to be able to record programs when you weren't around, when you weren't home or something like that. So, uh, which meant that they were actually inventing what we in the 1980s called time shifting, recording TV programs and looking at them another time. Well, that's what they invented with, with the Model 1 tape recorder in 1955. But here we have the Model 2, which was a, is a complete mechanical redesign from the Model 1. Um, and this machine, this design was so successful that Tanberg kept using it for their machines for about 20 years and, and were actually, uh, e even in new, new designs, um, whereas, and, and they kept manufacturing machines with this basic design for 30 years after this one was introduced. So it was very successful for them. The design itself was, if not copied, then very heavily influenced by the American, later versions of the American Sound Mirror tape recorder from the Brush Development Company. And then the joystick control, which is very simple and intuitive, fast wind to the left, fast wind to the right, and then playback by pulling it forward. Uh, the Sound Mirror, as it must be said, had the playback position in the, in, the, in the other direction, but that was the basic idea there. This machine also has a figure eight belt running between the reel holders with the motor in the middle, and that's also uh, a sound mirror design feature. That means that in the stop mode these reels actually turn against each other and that's how the braking system works. There's a certain amount of, of um, torque that, that's applied. If you turn one back the end you can, you can, it works as a brake compared to just letting both reels go freely. Um, the machine is a very basic feature set. Uh, in those days a tape recorder was very expensive and they had to do that in order to keep uh, the price at a reasonable level. So there's the joystick control, there's a volume control, recording, playback, and amplifier uh, selector, two tape speeds, and a loudspeaker selector, and a power switch, and a recording level indicator over here. And that's it. There's a pilot lamp here in the middle. Uh, that's it. There's, there's uh, really a basic feature set. The only thing that could have been simple is they could have avoided the, the speed selector. Incidentally, the speed selector is a bit unusual in that uh, rather than have positions like this selector here, uh, what you have instead uh, are um, is that it's, it's it switches the it moves uh, an intermediate puck wheel between different steps on the motor pulley. Uh, so what you do is you turn it slightly to the right, then either you pull it up to reach the highest tape speed, or turn it to the right and push it down to get the lower tape speed. Um, so it's a bit of a cumbersome design, and they actually redid that design for the Model 3 and the later models. So you have a selector that looks more like this, which makes it much easier to operate and also much easier to see what is actually, uh, which speed the machine is actually operating at. So we're going to do a little uh, dem playback demonstration. Uh, we'll put, turn the machine on, put an empty reel here on the right and a reel of, of recorded tape on the left hand side here. Uh, now note when I thread the tape the reels very obviously turn in opposite directions which does not make it easier to thread because you, you feel you're fighting something all the time here. In fact later machines introduced a, another position on the joystick here which put the, the reels in a, in a position where they operated freely from each other. So here we wind forward a bit into the tape and set it to playback mode, turn the volume up and we can listen to the recording. The sound quality, on, even on these early timbres, is quite good, uh, even in the, the built-in loudspeaker. Uh, we'll wind this back and, and do a bit of a recording, and I'll mention that uh, this is a fairly early model too, uh, and that's you can see that because there is no, no, um, uh, no tape counter here on the right. And another thing is that there's no switch here on the left, which you'll see on many later Tanbergs, to increase the bass. 
Uh, and that's a form of loudness control to compensate for the fact that the built-in loudspeaker is very small. So to make it sound, improve the sound, there's a switch which increases the bass. And, and that was fairly unique to Tamburg, and they, they may kept that on their machines until they introduced the the um, into introduced proper tone controls in the late 60s. Um, another thing to note is that the top cover of this machine is is brown hammerite, uh, which it's not my favorite really. The later machines have a yellow hammerite surface, with I think surface which I think is much more stylish. But on, this is very typically 1950s with this this sort of uh, white bakelite or yellow yellow beige bakelite and and then uh, brown surfaces. What I'm going to do here is use a microphone, which I plug in here. This is a microphone of a slightly later vintage than the recorder, but it's the it's the right type of, of microphone for it. So when I turn this selector to record, it, 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 it springs back and lets you put the selector switch in the forward position. So we're going to make a little recording here. I don't know if you can see on the video how there's some sort of indication on the indicator tube here that there's a signal being going, that a signal going onto the tape. Uh, on these early machines, they don't have any any damping on the, on the on the indication here, so it tends to flutter very quickly because it's actually moving at the same rate as the sound waves, which means it flutters back and forth, and it's actually very difficult to re read the recording level. And they remedied that on later models by having uh, a damping circuit so that you, you basically read the peaks of the input signal on, on the recording level meter. So we'll wind the tape back and listen to this. Damping on the, on the on the indication here, so it tends to flutter very quickly because it's actually moving at the same rate as the sound waves. So there we are. Um, I'll do a quick demonstration of the the fast wind. Fast wind is not incredibly fast on this machine, uh, but with a full reel of tape on the left, it does get up to a fairly good speed, indicating that the the clutches underneath the the reel holders are in good condition. There's no automatic stop. The tape keeps winding at full speed once it runs off the reel until you put the, the speed selector in the stall position and, and turn off the motor. Incidentally, this particular machine actually comes with this uh, the original cable for connecting to the loudspeaker uh, or to the to the loudspeaker output and the gramophone input of the uh, of a radio. Sadly, it's it's missing one of the banana plugs at the other end, but it's the original brown cable with colored banana plugs. And it all fits nicely in a little accessory uh, accessory slot here, which is quite big. You can even fit a microphone or maybe even a small reel of tape in there. Final point to note, uh, with the speed selector, uh, there's an intermediate puck wheel that's never disengaged here. So if you leave it in this position for a while, you'll get a small hump bump on, on the wheel, which eventually gets worn down when, when the machine uh, runs. But I tend to sort of put the machine in a halfway position between the two speeds when not using it to keep the puck wheel unloaded, and that avoids getting any any bumps on it. Okay, well there we have it, the Tanberg Model 2 tape recorder from 1956. Thank you for watching, and uh, goodbye. <laughs>